Welcome everyone to our May A to J Author New User Webinar. I'm Jessica Frank, A to J Author's Project Manager. Before we kick off, I just want to invite you all to attend CaliCon 23. This is our 31st or 32nd year of doing the Cali Conference. Cali is the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction and is A to J Author's parent company. Every year we host a conference on law school, legal education, legal technology. This year's is June 15th through the 16th at Penn Carey Law School in Philadelphia. So we recommend um, or we invite you all to attend. You can attend in person in Philadelphia over the two days. Um, and we have tons of great programming, snacks, fun events to attend to, or you can attend virtually as well. Both of those options are available on, our, on the website 2023.calicon.org. So hope to see some of you there. We'll have a couple of sessions on A to J author, um, and you can see the draft agenda on the website as well. Before we kick off today again, I want to do a tip for authoring. So usually each month I provide a tip that's come up in conversations with authors over the month, the past month since our last webinar, or some error that I'm seeing frequently. This month's tip for authoring is, instead of a tip, I have a request for you. So we're always thinking of ways to improve A to J author with an eye towards potential TIG applications, other grants, um, ways that we can keep A to J author sustainable. So if you've ever, if you are a new author or if you have worked with A to J author in the past, please spend a couple minutes during this webinar and uh, afterwards thinking of ways that we can improve the tool for you. Is there something specifically that's lacking that you've seen in other document assembly tools that you'd like to see in A to J author? Is there a blocker to your workflow that you'd like fixed? We'd love to hear from you. Um, if there are any features or any support items that we could develop for you that would make you want to automate more forms, we'd love to hear that. Basically, how can we make A to J work better for you? So you can put your ideas in the chat if you want, um, and I can, I'll look at those either during the meeting and we can talk about them or after the meeting, or you can email me directly at jessica at cali.org. So let's kick off and talk about repeat loops. We'll cover today what repeat loops are, why you'd want them or need them in an interview, the two ways to create repeat loops in A to J author, and how variables are the same but also different when you use them in a repeat loop. So what is a repeat loop? Sometimes called a repeat dialogue, those are used interchangeably in the document assembly space, but basically it's a series of questions that are gonna display to the end user multiple times based on the user's input. Why would you need them or want them? You use repeat loops if you're trying to gather the same type of information multiple times from the end user. It saves you, the, the author, the creator of the interview, from having to create multiple versions of the same question over and over again, and it allows you to have either a defined set of times that the same series of questions is asked to the end user, or a potentially infinite number of times that you ask the same thing over and over again, depending on how many of the user needs it. There are two ways to make a repeat loop in A to J author, and both have the same outcome. It just depends on why you're asking the series of questions over and over again. You can either collect the number of items, the number of people first, you ask the user how many times they need to go through the loop, or the second way is to ask if there are any more items or any more people or any more times they have to go through the loop at the end of the loop. It's basically the upfront or at the end way of uh, doing repeat loops. Let's talk about the first one first, which is collecting the number first. You use this when, you, when the end user will know right away how many times they have to go through the series of questions. So for example, you're asking them how many children they have, you ask for that number up front. It's the first question of the loop, the jumping off point, but it's not gonna be repeated every time they go through the series of loops, the series of questions in the loop. The end user only asks the answers the how many question once, and then it, that tells the software how many times to take the end user through the next series of questions. So in this example, it's how many children do you have? There's a drop down list. I believe this one maxes out at 10 because that's the parameters I've put on this interview. But then the next series of questions will ask multiple questions about the children. There are seven steps when you collect the number first. The first step is to create the set of questions that you want repeated. So you can do this on the pages tab or through the map tab 
by creating that series of questions. So you're going to want to ask the name of the, ch the child, their birth date, where they live, potentially where they live for the last five years, who their other parent is, what school they go to, whatever that series of questions is, you create that series of questions. Then step two is to create the counting variable. The counting variable is the means by which the software tracks how many times the end user has gone through the loop. The counting variable generally follows a different naming convention than typical variables. So here, instead of having, for example, child name middle TE with a two letter indicator, each word separated, we have child count as all one word, both child and count are capitalized, and there's no two letter indicator. So right away, looking at my list of variables, I can tell that this is a counting variable and it is used to, is different than the other variables in my interview. You do have to make sure that your counting variable is a number variable and is not set to hold multiple values. You only want one value being stored in that count. Oops, sorry, skipped a few there. Step three then is taking us back to that how many question, that jumping off. So how many do you have? It has a field that collects a number variable, something like number of children and you. On that how many question, on the button that says continue, that jumps them into the loop, you'll choose the repeat option of set counting variable to one and include the counting variable you created in step two that we just talked about, that counting variable, uh, and you put it in the counting variable field on that button as the second screenshot shows here. This initiates the count and tells A to J author that the user is going into a repeat loop. Then you set the destination for this button to the first question in the series of questions to be repeated. So in this example, my destination is two dash child's name. It's the first of my questions to be repeated to the end user. On each of those pages that will be repeated, um, in my example here, child name and child's birth date, you put the counting variable in the counting variable field in the question text section. This tags it as a repeated question. Under the circled field in my screenshot, you'll see the outer loop counting variable. That's for nested repeat loops. Nested repeat loops are something the vast majority of you won't be using. Um, nested repeat loops are loops within a loop and they require a special hack if you're interested in using those because they're not natively supported by A to J author. But if you are interested in nested repeat loops, we have a training video on our YouTube channel and a sample exercise on our website under the learn tab, some sample exercises. The nested repeat loops are used, for example, in a scenario where child's information and you have to ask where the child has lived over the past five years, all of the different addresses. So there may be multiple ver multiple questions asked about a single child within a repeat loop about all the children that the user has. So it's the loop within a loop, pretty complicated um, stuff that most of you won't use. But again, if you do want to try it out, check out our YouTube channel for the nested repeat loop video in the sample exercise. Step six happens on the last question to repeat. In my example, it's the child's birth date question. I ask for the child's name, then the second question in my loop is asking for their birth date. On this question, under the button section, on the continue button, you're gonna select increment counting variable from the repeat options and put the counting variable in the counting variable field under it. When the user presses continue, A to J author will increment the counting variable by one. You think about in increasing the counting variable or incrementing it as adding a tally mark. It indicates to A to J author which iteration of the loop the end user is in. So this basically closes off the loop that you opened when they jumped into it on their name question and has said they have finished the loop. Now it's gonna have to evaluate in the next step whether they've gone through it as many times as they need to. So that's what happens in step seven is you create the logic that's gonna test if your end user has gone through the loop as many times as they said they needed to. So on that same last question that we just talked about in step six, but down in the logic section, you script a condition that tests if the counting variable equals the number of children. If it does, then move the end user out of the loop and into the next question. In my screenshot here, that's the do you have any questions, one dash do you have any. So if child count equals number of children and you, if the number of times they've gone through the loop equals the number of children they said they had, move on out of the loop. Otherwise else, go to two dash child's name, which then puts them back in the loop because they haven't gone through as many times um, as they said they needed to. 
This condition runs every time the end user hits the child's birthday question and reevaluates how many times the end user has done the loop over and over again as they can complete the loop of the two questions in my example. So the second way to do repeat loops in A to J author is to ask to add more at the end. This asks the user directly if they want or need to go through the loop again once they have completed the series of repeated questions. This is used when the user won't likely know upfront how many times they need to go through the loop. In my example here, it's asking about assets over $100. That's not something that the end user will likely know off the top of their head when, when they start unless they have some sort of list. So they're gonna start answering the questions about their assets and then, oh yeah, I have one more, oh yeah, I have one more, or no, I'm done. Um, this is most commonly used in questions about their assets or their debts or what bills they pay each month or things that are less concrete, like number of children. So if, if the end user is not likely to know how many times they need to go through the loop, you use this ask to add more at the end option. This way only has five steps and no logic, but most of the process is the same for um, either way that you create repeat loops. So you create that series of repeated questions in the map or in the pages tab. Then you create the counting variable. In this example, in this one, it's called asset count. Remember, it needs to be a number and should not be set to hold multiple values. Step three, you create a question that leads into the loop but is not part of the loop. So like we had the jumping off question in the first repeat loop example, we have one here as well. It's only asked once but it's where you set the counting variable to one and you tell A to J author what loop to initialize. This is what we call the do you have any question. This only takes an end user into the repeat loop if they need to go into the repeat loop. If they don't have any assets over 100, they don't need to tell you about their assets over $100, so they never would need to go in the loop. But if they do have assets or debts or bills to tell you about or income sources, whatever it is, then on the yes button, you set the counting variable to one, you tell A to J what counting variable it is, in this case, asset count, and then the destination for this button is to set them to the next page, the first page of the, the questions that will be repeated. On every question to be repeated, you tag it as a repeating question by putting the counting variable in the counting variable field of the question text. The last step is to ask the do you have any more question. So it's a question that says, do you have another asset over $100 to add? Do you have any more to tell me about? Whatever the question you want to phrase it as. If they say yes, that means they want to go back through the loop. So you increment the counting variable and put the counting variable in the counting variable field on that yes button. And you set the destination to the first question of the loop again. So again, in this example, it's two dash asset name. On the no button, you just branch the end user to the next question that is outside of the loop. There's no repeat loop options for um, moving the end user out of the loop. You can tell if a page is part of a repeat loop on the pages tab by um, the, it's a circle arrow sort of icon and the word loop. Those will tell you if those pages have been tagged with counting variables to indicate that they are part of the loop. Um, in my screenshot here in step two, you, this is the asking to add more option. You can see the first page of do you have any, do you have any assets over 100, that jumping off question is not part of the loop, but asset name and any more are both questions that are repeated to the end user, and those I've tagged as part of the repeat loop because they are intended to be repeated to the end user. So let's talk about variables a little bit in a repeat dialog. Variables and repeated questions are used just like any other variables in any other type of question. You create them the same way. They generally follow the same naming convention. The only difference is that when a variable is used in a repeated question, it is intended to save multiple values to the same question. So child first name TE can potentially store, you know, Madison and Allison and John and all like different names all serialized in that in that variable. So you want it to hold multiple values rather than the second child overriding the first one, the third child overriding the second's information. So you need to tell A to J to make space for those additional variable those additional values in the variable. You do that by on the, in the variables tab in the variable design editor where you create the variable, checking this box that says check if multiple values. This tells A to J to allow for those additional values to be stored within a single variable. 
A lot of times with debugging, people will say my repeat loop isn't working. The second kid keeps overriding the first kid's name, and it's literally as easy as they didn't check to hold multiple values. So this is a, an easy way to troubleshoot some issues that you have with repeat loops. To hold multiple values, A to J is, um, is creating basically a, a different, uh, it, it's appending a pound sign and a loop number to the end of the variable each time to essentially designate that that is a different, ver different value. Um, so for example, you can use the information, you can use the fact that there are multiple values held by a variable to call out specific instances of that variable if you wanna use it in a macro. Um, so in child first name TE, if you put that into a macro, it would show all of the values held by that um, variable, which I'll show you in, ex in an example why, in a second why you might want that. But if you just want to call out whatever iteration of the loop they're on, so you only want to use the, the first child's name, you can call it out individually by pound one or pound two. Um, you can see in the script that uh, Catherine and Elizabeth are the two examples of the middle names. Um, I could call out different uh, iterations by using the pound, whatever the counting variable is, or whatever iteration of the loop they're in. And then the only difference when um, in the question itself to identify it as part of a repeat loop as opposed to a different question is by tagging it with that counting variable in the question text section. So that's what in, what triggers that repeat loop icon to show up in the pages tab is when you put the counting variable in the counting variable field under the text section. As I mentioned, if you are using a macro and you just call out the variable itself and it is holding multiple values, it will show all of the iterations, all of the values held by that asset or by that variable. Um, and you might want to use that, for example, on that, do you have any more question? They can have a learn more that says, what assets have I already told you about? And you can have a macro that says, you've told me about your, and then asset name TE, for example. And it'll say, you've told me about your house and car. You've told me about your house, your car, and your jet ski. And A to J will, when displaying multiple values, automatically put in a comma and the word and when appropriate, when having multiple values. So you don't have to do anything to trigger the example here with the and between house and car. Um, if it was a third option, it would be house, comma, car, and jet ski, whatever it is. This allows you to, d to display back to your end user what they've already told you about at the point in which you're asking them if they need to go through the loop again. It just helps create that list for them and remind them what they've already told you about. As I mentioned, you can call it specific iterations of the loop by doing variable name pound counting variable. So if I just want to call out like what is, they've already told me that their first child's name is Allison and I want to say what is Allison's date of birth, I can call that out with the macro child first name TE pound child count. And A to J, each time the end user goes through it, will only call out whatever iteration of the loop they are on. So what is Allison's date of birth? What is Christopher's date of birth? What is John's date of birth? Whatever it is, um, they'll, it'll only, only use that one value rather than displaying all the values held by child's name first, TE. If you now wanna go practice these skills, we have a sample exercise that goes through the guided interview that I took these screenshots from to build out one that does both the repeat loops of collecting the number up front and asking to add more at the end. It's a pretty basic interview, um, but if you wanna practice your skills, then I would suggest going to our sample exercises, which are under the Learn tab or at the URL here. Also, the, a reminder, this, hand, this is a handout that is in the handout section of the GoToWebinar. When this is posted on YouTube, I will also link to the handout itself for those who may be watching the recording later. And if you have any questions, you can always email me, jessica at cali.org. Our next webinar is June 1st at 11 a.m. Central Time. Thank you all for attending today, and I hopefully will see you all in June or at the New User Webinar or come again to our Cali Conference in Philadelphia. So thank you all for attending.